Rabbi Yaakov Emden did not denigrate the Zohar at all. He included some of it in his famous sitter. Oh, yeah, that's what we want to talk about. Okay, just for anybody who, who's under the false assumption that Rabbi Emden Rabbi, was, was against the Zohar, God forbid. Yeah. He, he basically said, uh, all he said was, it amounts to the following. Read the Zohar and be careful not to let your imagination run away with, with it yeah. and, and make sure you learn it correctly. That's about it. That's all he said. Yeah. So let's let's get into this. Like, and again, I want to tell the folks at home that, you know, as much as I agree with Frank on many things, I, you know, how should I put this? It's not that I'm not in full agreement with you on this. There are certain aspects about it which I'm not necessarily on board with either because I'm just fundamentally not on board with them, or maybe I'm not, or, and, or maybe I'm not there yet. I'll leave it at that. With that said, with that said, That's you got very into vague. it. Huh? Very vague. That's very vague. What are we talking about here? I'm, I, I will explain why okay. I'm saying it vague. With that said, you got into an exchange today with, 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 with a friend of mine who, you know, you posted a post from, I guess, your wife's cousin, uh, the illustrious Rabbi Dov Ber Pinson, uh, which said the following, uh, the greatest miracle of Hanukkah is us, we who perform the mitzvah and kindle a light despite being surrounded by darkness. So you posted this, you, 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 know, you shared it on your wall, and our friend went into this whole thing of the miracle of Hanukkah is that Jews defeated an empire of Greek pagans and their Jewish allies. Correct. Which started as a culture war and erupted in the, into a physical war. Correct. I'm just, you know, I'm validating for my own. This is my own opinion. Now. Wait a minute. I wasn't even contending with that party. No, I know, I know. So let me, I'll just go through this whole thing. The light of Hanukkah is not the miracle or the reason we say hollow. The miracle was the one that we won independence from the globalist power of those times. If you worship candles, try the Diwali festival, you know, the, the Hindu yeah, Indian. Yeah. The holiday was canonized because our rabbis knew that another global empire would arise and draw Jews into their ranks to attempt to eradicate our people. The next Hanukkah miracle would be Jews surviving the current culture war. And then he felt the need to say, P.S. The Rebbe is in Mashiach and he's not even a Maccabee or a Morachai, both of who succeeded in their mission while alive and walking on earth. I don't know what the hell that has to do with effing anything. Meaning I, I don't necessarily agree or disagree with him. I'm just trying to understand what has anything to do with what you posted or what he even posted. Right. And then you wrote to him, I love you, but you're a moron. And then he and then he wrote, You're not up to you. You're not a moron. You're into esoteric ideas. I would never insult you. Please make your points without insult. Here are some facts regarding Hanukkah. I welcome your refutation of them. And then he posted Rabbi uh, uh what's his name? David Bar Fahim, who I actually respect as well. I do too. I don't agree with, but I do I respect. Okay. That. Yeah, so 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 you responded, I don't mind being insulted, have at it. What I do mind is you personally misconstrued what Rabbi Pinson said, so you can launch an unprovoked barrage of insults at people you don't like because you have a different opinion than they do. Don't take on a sanctimonious tone all, all of a sudden, it is dishonest. If you wanted to share your opinion in an honest way, it would sound something like, I disagree with Rabbi Pinson for the following reason, or I think the Lubavitch Rebbe is or isn't something for the following reason. Instead, you 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 were no, knowingly disrespectful, and you definitely meant to be hostile. I still, and then you wrote, I still love you. And then you go, I don't disagree with Rob Pinson. I'm sure he's a great guy. He's just trying to his best to turn Jews onto spiritual ideas. The problem is that esoteric ideas are foreign to Judaism. No. That's yeah. why non-religious Jews folks relate to that and not the actual Torah. I disagree, I disagree with esoteric Judaism since it has created a new religion within Judaism in the last 600 years or so that has nothing to do with the religion or the mission and the Talmud. Incorrect. And then he said, please hear the video. Uh, and then he goes, look, I would love to hear you have this conversation with the Vilna Gong. And then he's like, just listen to the video. I said that. I said Yeah, I yeah, yeah. You said that to him. <laughs> and then you respond. And then he said, look, look, the video. He's like, I heard that video several times. That's you responding to him. Discussed it with several rabbis I know and trust. Rabbi Bar Chaim doesn't go to great lengths to accurately represent the opinions that he doesn't like. If you talk to people that do accurately represent those opinions, you would immediately begin to see that reality is a bit more complicated than you are comfortable with. 
understand that this discussion is about you and your discomfort with realities that you don't like. And he responded, please send me the info. I'd like to be proven wrong. I will try to make an episode. You responded about it. I will take this issue seriously, but it will take some time. And he said, looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll have sources. And then uh, this other guy chimed in, Jeff. By the somebody. way, my, my discussion with him continues in the messages. Uh, would it be immoral to read that? Probably, right? Because that yeah, yeah, that's private already. Yeah. Uh, then this other guy, this other guy chimes in. Uh, he said that the theme that Hanukkah represents an ongoing culture war is true and believable and reflect, reflects the world today. Instead of denigrating the Rebbe, you should be celebrating the fact that he got the entire world to recognize the miracles of Hanukkah with public menorah lightings. Instead of attacking Hasidus, you should celebrate that Chabad Hasidim have returned so many neshamas to Yiddishkeit, including my family. If you can't do the above, best to leave out the Rebbe and Hasidus from your post because your post, it's well-written and reasonable and makes a good point. So he just, he just you know, put, a, you know, like that meme, you know, the guy is in a bicycle and he put a stick inside his wheel. Yeah. His own wheel, you know, like. like in the spokes. In the spokes. Why? <laughs> it's like debil. Hey. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, listen. He's one of many fans of your brother. So I know. You know, I can't look. I want to be. I'm conflicted because at the same time, of course, I don't want to alienate fans of my brother primarily for one reason. Because you never know if somebody's gonna get like mad at me, and then they're they're not gonna listen to my brother's advice medically. Yeah. I've encountered this already. I, I don't want that to happen to anyone. Yeah, but on the other hand, I gotta. Oh, sorry, one second. On the other hand, you gotta be. We're truth fanatics. Yeah. Enough said. Yeah. We're serious about it. So, let's get into this thing, man. I mean, how would you? I mean, like, how would you respond? You know, sometimes people come come at me like that. Also, like, you know. This is only a, you know, Kabbalah, let's say, the Zohar, whatever you want to call it. This is a, something that came about later. It's a later development. You know, the answer that I normally give is, you know, we basically have, um, you know how like in software, there's operating system, you know, patch updates. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not that the Torah needs updating. It's that you're adding patches patches are files uh certain functions you know certain certain things that makes whatever it is that you're you're using run faster better right certain things in this case that make people understand the torah better understand understand halacha better understand what we're doing on a on a more on a deeper level yes you can say give credence to what he's saying what i'll be saying in a way where yeah people have taken that and have ran with it in in multiple multitude of directions in the wrong directions you know like shop and other people and gnostics and whomever else yes they have done that but and, and kabbalah center i'll throw in as well but just because they have done that doesn't negate or nullify what it is and it's precisely why the people who did write these writings said only a few you know it was kept secret forever you know it wasn't it didn't come about a thousand years ago it came about two thousand actually even before that probably before in russia by high and they were secrets for thousands of years because they knew that if you let the secret out of the bag to the wrong people to the wrong hands it's gonna be some problems correct so if you want to be against quote unquote esoteric Judaism, be against it, be against uh, the way people apply it. But to be against it as a, you know, the essence of it as a thing, that's just stupid. Because that's the that's the so to speak software patch, you know, which at least as far as I'm concerned, for our generation is the key to the whole equation. You know, if you're missing Hasidut, if you're missing real, you know. Kabbalah, if you're missing all of these esoteric things, you're just missing it. it, it, it there's blanks. 
there's literally blanks and yes gaon mi vilna like hello gaon mi vilna the person yeah. that put you think the yeah, you into harem hello exactly you think you think you're gonna you think you're gonna trick the the gaon of vilna or the ramban the maharal yeah ramban uh, the uh, Ramhal, no, everyone, Ramhal. literally every, everyone, everyone. Dude, you know that Rav Moshe Chaim Luzato suffered. Why? He suffered because he came right after Shabtai Tzvi, and the entirety of, of Italy chased him around like, like, like he was like you know the uh, link from Legends of Zelda, running around Italy and wherever else he went as a young guy because he wrote in the all these. He was a genius. He wrote all these books when he was like 18, 17, You know when we we're playing with our you know what's at the same age, he was writing these books, okay? And he was chased around. And the only reason people chased him around is because, because he came after a guy who, who took those ideas and used them in the wrong, the wrong way. But, but, dude, if you're saying that these things are not valid, you're just playing yourself. You're literally playing yourself and you're like throwing out, you know, staples, uh, books that are in every yeshiva. Like, seriously, man, like, I didn't grow up religious, but I, even I know that. <laughs> yeah. Anything to add, counselor? A bit, a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good metaphor, and I'm, I'm not going coming up with a good metaphor, so I'll give you a bad metaphor, okay? Please. Real Kabbalah, Torah Kabbalah, is... God explaining to us in many levels, okay? There are infinite levels, and these are some of them, as to why it's important to him that he has a relationship with us and why it's important that uh, uh, key, that's key, absolutely vital to that relationship is our observance of the commandments. And also why the commandments are so important to him, what, what that's all about. We have all these observances. He told us about it. Halacha, halacha. Let me, let me rephrase it for, for guys like Avi. He wants you to know why the halacha is so important to him. Why you have to dedicate your life. Why you got to do what you want to do. Yeah. If you reject that knowledge, you are rejecting God's advance advances meaning like a like a man like, advancing on a woman like, like a romantic advance yeah. a, a person or 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 a woman advancing let's say you have a married couple okay one of this one of the the, the the husband or the wife they want to share something very intimate about themselves something just a feeling that they had a thought you know uh something that they feel very vulnerable exposing Okay, and they take a chance and say, I'd like to tell you something about myself that's important to me. So they're hoping that the other person is going to say, I, there's nothing I want more than to know you better. Please tell me whatever it is. And I'm, listen, uh, you have my full attention and my, and my utmost respect. Uh, you don't have to say all those words, but the, the other person has to feel that from you, right? Or you, you definitely want to feel that from the other person if, if you're the one that wants to reveal something, okay? Uh, that's what this is. That's what Kabbalah is, okay? And to say, oh, I'm not going to, I don't want to look at it you know, because of one reason or another. Then what's the point of this relationship, Right. I mean, you could kind of understand, like metaphorically speaking, why if God wouldn't want to <laughs> right, continue. Yeah. But he promised to continue anyway. I mean, you know, even if we do that a million times, he's not going to end the relationship. But it's why does it have to be like this? Yeah, that's one of the rare times you're going to hear me defending God. <laughs> Right. Listen, so at the end of the day, God, that's the only part I can I can relate yeah. to him. You know, like yeah. Yeah. so. So so basically, if you're not like you know, you you want to live a mindless existence. Essentially, if you're ignoring Kabbalah, you want to live kind of a mindless existence. You just wanna you want to be you don't want to be a mind. You just want to be a, a functioning automaton. That's not what this is about. That's not what we're doing here. 
Yeah. Again, I don't want you to stop doing mitzvahs. I don't want you to stop doing the observances. Okay? Um, and, as, and, and look, if you got something going on internally, right? Uh, a relationship, some kind of personal conversation with God, like a real one, that's just you. It's not like some kind of like, you know, reflection or some kind of projection or illusion of a relationship that, that you're just kind of like mirroring from your rabbi, right? Like, the, like the, the, the kind of relationship you perceive that your rabbi is having with God. If you have your own personal thing with God while performing commandments and praying, then, then that's good. That's what, that's what Kabbalah is trying to create for people. That's what it's for. That, that's, that's what this whole world is for. Okay? So if you have that going on and you didn't learn any Kabbalah, I don't want you to lose that. Continue that. I just wanted to say that learning Kabbalah is only going to deepen that. Yeah. That's really what we were trying to say. Yeah. Okay? And like, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Like, why don't you want to learn more about God? You know, like, I used to have a curiosity, you know, like, yeah, it shouldn't be a morbid curiosity. I think, I think a lot of people, and I'm not, I can't even speak to our friend. I think a lot of people that I've spoken to about this, who, who share those sentiments, similar sentiments, I think they're literally, some of them have even told me openly that they are afraid of where this whole thing might take them. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're afraid of. Some of them even told me straight up they're afraid of going crazy. <laughs> um, I had a friend actually tell me that um, who used to go to Kabbalah Center, Jewish guy, that the minute he started, you know, learning certain things and about the you know in depth nature of things, he noticed that, for example, weird things started to happen in his life, both good and bad um or you know kind of challenging but also you know uh things started like breaking or i don't know just had he had like weird things happen you know so i feel like a lot of people realize that there's something to it and again they don't it's almost like they don't want to go beneath the veneer go beneath the veil you know, it's like the people that I've spoken to primarily, I'm not gonna, I don't want to single out the monorthodox crowd, but so many of the people I've spoken to in that, in that scene have said to me, just do, you know, just do the mitzvot. And, 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 and I say, what, but why, why are you, are you doing this mitzvah? Be, we do it because God said so, you know, I'm like, wow, man, like God says so really, that's all. That's really, that's really it. But I feel like they don't want to know. They don't need to know why he said it. Because if they if they find out why he said it, they may either stop doing it. Or what might happen is they may all of a sudden have to face the um, face their own kind of um, demons meaning a lot of these people grew up religious right and they it's it's at some point it becomes rote you know at some point it just becomes you know they learned off yomi they daven three times a day they daven in a minion more than you and i right but it becomes rote so now when you start learning the inner mechanics of everything and it's not rote anymore it cease it, it, it de facto will cease to be rote now you have to look at yourself in the mirror and, and so to speak look at Hashem and talk to Hashem and, and interface with Hashem and that that whole scene is very scary dude it is scary I, I don't blame them to people who are uninitiated with it you know what I mean like guys like you and I I don't know about you dude but I I started with the esoteric meaning meaning that's how that's of course the gate, that's the gate through which which Hashem you know, he took, he grabbed my hand and he, and he, you know, he took my hand and he led me through it. It's almost as if I didn't even have um, a choice, you know, since I'm a kid, this was, this happened, this started, you know, 
And uh, he did it via, you know, obviously movies and things that happened in my life and people that I met and people that I've spoken to and rabbis and this and that, even my father in some ways. And, and that's the way it happened. And, and I really, before I ever did a mitzvah, let's say, or before I even ever, I shouldn't say that, but before I ever kept Shabbat and kosher, and before I became a fully fledged, what you would want to call from Jew, I was already interfacing with these things for years. You know, and all that was left to do was, was the, in fact, the road stuff or the physicality of the road stuff, right? But I was already interfacing with that stuff for years, whether you want to talk about books or just ideas or, again, you know, people, rabbis, in situations in life, you know, all the rest of it. And I can't imagine that it's anything else. Like I can't imagine it. I can't imagine anything else. You know what I mean? Like I, I can't. I can't imagine it just being the surface level practice. Because because if you're telling me that none of this has any metaphysical effect, then what? Why the hell? And we've spoken about this before. Why the hell? That I drop some of these earthly pleasures that I was very much enjoying. Nachuitam yifso, pardon my language. Yeah. Unless it means something. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> so you know? can, can I, yeah. I'd like to I'd yeah. like to add. Yeah. I'd like to support what you're saying. Uh, I, you know, I have a lot of work to do in terms of avoda, meaning observance. Yeah. Okay? You know, that, that's, the, that's one of my many, many, many flaws that I'm, you know. But I can tell you one thing. Whatever, whatever observances I do keep, it's only because I, you know, uh, of what I learned in, in what is, you know, what is quote-unquote, you know, Kabbalah or that, things that seem mystical to people. It's only because of that. Okay. If I had to live, you know, on the state of consciousness that like some, like the, some of these like modern Orthodox guys that you're, that you're describing, right. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't function on that level. Like, I don't understand there. There's no, there's no guiding principle. It's just, it's just, it just, you grew up that way and you're used to it. Yeah. That's the low. That's like, that's one level above you know, assimilate in the next generation. Yeah, but well, a lot of them, that's the thing, a lot of them do. They're the, the next generation of, of, of some of these people is already going. They become woke. They become reform or I don't know. Yeah, woke, wokies. Dude, there's woke, dude, there's yeah. woke Lubavitch kids. Or people who grew up in Lubavitch families, let's put it exactly. that way. Yeah. They're put woke. It, <laughs> that's a, look, look, when it comes to this kind of stuff, Right with all these frauds, uh, imposters, we do have to be careful. Language does matter. Yeah, what you just said, right, is important. You said you corrected it. You said not they're not Lubavitch kids. They're kids that grew up in Lubavitch families. That doesn't mean they're Lubavitchers. Yeah, some of these kids chose to not be. You know what's funny? I've I've seen a lot of their, um, you know, them get married and they marry. Uh, other people who grew up in Lubavitch families, and when they have weddings, they have nigunim, and they have the whole Lubavitch, you know, Cirque du Soleil. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. I'm just saying they have the whole. They I have mean, the you whole, do a little bit. Let's be honest, a little bit. I mean, it's what? Little, no, it's I'm a, saying. I, I mean, I mean that like they they have the whole set there. You know, they 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 do the whole routine. Yeah, because they, they because Lubavitchers are always their parents want them to. <laughs> not only that but only like it's not like it's not like the community doesn't know who these kids really are yeah but they think that the remedy part of the remedy is to do that for them yes and the gunam and all these things yeah. you know to just overwhelm them with uh with holiness and and positive and positivity listen, and could, hopefully it, that'll that'll have the effect listen it could be it yeah. could be for some of them it could be yeah. You know, and it, it probably works because uh, I know a lot of guys that got their crap together once they got married. You know, they they yeah. just you see them all the, all of a sudden, you know, 
Yeah. They're, you see them, you know, they're, they're you know, they're, they're going to Hasidus in the morning out of nowhere. Like what? Yeah. Like, yeah. Something the happened. Proper, the proper Lubavitch guys. No, I mean, there's a whole shul of them. No, uh, that no, I no they become, they become like that. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and, 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 and it's not because they married a, a whole, you know, a particularly religious girl either. It's this, no. the girl is just like them too. Yeah. Something no, happened. I'm telling you, dude, dude, there was a whole shul of guys like that uh, where I lived in Crown Heights. Guys who were like party, grew up Lubavitch. They all grew up Lubavitch. They're all party guys. And they're, you know, late teens, early 20s. And then they got married to girls who were just like them, party girls. Lubavitch, you know, raised Lubavitch. And now they're like proper Lubavitch people with families. I'd like to create another metaphor now. And it's going to be very inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing this for shock value, but I do think it might, it might do some good. The type of guys that you're describing, not these Lubavitch guys, before, you know, the guys, the guys that don't really want to know, they don't want to delve into the reasons, they don't want to know God's infinite, uh, intimate information, um, is very, it reminds me of the following. Like, you have, like, you have guys who, you know, they marry a nice girl. Mm -hmm. I think we talked, I already brought this up. Yeah. It's like that Brian Adams song. Yeah. Right? So... But I actually, it, it, last time I spoke about it is because I feel it, it, this is kind of a reverse thing. Mm -hmm. But we'll get back to that. Here's the metaphor. By just kind of like doing things in a rote way, right? It's mm -hmm. like you have a wife that you kind of just do your job for her. You know, you, you perform your duties. It's not particularly passionate, but whatever, you know, you, you get through the day. Get through the day, you know, it's uh, th sometimes it's mildly pleasant, maybe, you know, uh, usually it's challenging, certainly not passionate. There's not a lot going on in the bedroom. Okay. However, that's bad enough, but here's something even worse. The passion is there. It's just not for her. There's an energy there that's going to be put somewhere. There's some kind of passion and it's going to go somewhere. And if you're not using it to in your marriage with God, you know, as to use as a metaphor, you're going to you're going to use it in an affair. Those are the only two choices. Because if you don't have that passion, you're not even alive. You're not even really here. Yeah. Yeah. Part of what we're doing here is to, is to figure out what to do with that passion. To somehow, you know, to wield it. It's very unwieldy. But to, if you can somehow, you know, by hook or by crook and with a lot of help and assistance from heaven and, and much effort, you could somehow get that passion and focus it correctly which is, I, to me, I have so far not successful. I, I'm just aware of the concept. I know that's what I'm supposed to strive for. Okay. Well, I guess that is some level of success if I know that's what the direction should be. That is something. Right. But, 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 but the point is that, you know, it's either that or I'm screwing up. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I can't be neutral. I can't be like that vanilla. Yeah. If I'm not, go, you know, if I'm not like, you know, going all in on one thing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting pulled in the other direction and it's it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and if that's not happening to you, 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 you're a pussy, you're a weenie. Like you're not even, you're not living your life. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so, so basically what happens is like this, the Kabbalah is like God's lingerie. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm serious. Look, look, you know what I'm saying, right? It's the it's the stuff. It's the real. It's the real intimate bedroom stuff. Okay. It's a it's a passionate, sexual relationship with a married couple. Now, some for some people, it's like, it's hard to even like, put those two things in the same. You know what I mean? Like passionate and sexual, and then the concept of marriage. It seems to kind of nullify it, each other. You know what I mean? Like for people. And myself included, it was very difficult to imagine how the kind of stuff I saw in porno my whole life growing yeah. up, like, like, like everybody else, like every other average kid. 
Okay. <laughs> how does yeah. that, you know, how's that happen in, in marriage? Most of it can't, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. seven girls and like, you know, 48, <laughs> 48 midgets. And, you know, oh, you know God. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, Dear Lord. you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm being a little, I'm doing yeah. a little shtick here, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Like, how does that, how do I take that and somehow, I don't know, do you understand? But that's what we got to do. You got to try to figure it out. Okay. So that's, and I'm talking about your relationship with God. I'm not talking about like, you know, at this time, at this moment, you know, your actual personal marriage, that that's, that's not my department to do for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can use it as a metaphor. You know, it applies to all such relationships. Okay. So right now we're talking about God. Okay. So the, so what happens is like this. Um, let, let's talk about a hypothetical married couple, hypothetical married couple. Try not to imagine anybody that you know, because it makes you throw open your mouth a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know it does for me. Yeah. I'm the kind of guy that like, literally I can't like picture a married couple in any kind of sexual scenario because I don't know. Listen, it just, it's like, ugh. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel generally like that about any kind of sexual thing that I'm not personally involved in. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter how hot the lady is. It's just ugh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. She's married. It's done. It's like she was sprayed by a skunk. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot. Like she bathed in skunk spray. That's it. She's finished. Hilarious. If she could look like freaking Stephanie Seymour, and, and I still can't imagine it. Okay. Once Axel well, Rose, Stephanie Seymour or Jane Seymour. I'm talking about well, either one really, <laughs> but but, but Ste I'm talking about Stephanie Seymour. Mm. When the moment Axel Rose put his stupid oh, pinky yeah. on her, that's it. Yeah. Um, I can't even imagine touching yeah. her. Done. I don't want to think about her. I don't even want to think about. Her. But anyway, the point is that um, Kabbalah is like all the. I don't want to use the word crazy, but because I'm gonna, you know, if I do use the word crazy, I'm I'm using it. Not literally, but just kind of like I'm using it as very passionate. Yeah. Okay. So it's all of the it's all of the energy and the passion, the ferocious passion from the world, from the from the destroyed universe of chaos, from the pre-Genesis universe. Yeah. Okay. And God wants to somehow bring that into this, into this world. That's really what we're supposed to, you know, that's what we're waiting for. Except right now, you know, our actions by doing mitzvot, somehow that's building a stable vessel for it. Okay. So that is a metaphor for the, the you know, basically the wildest, you know, sex you can possibly imagine. And it's not, but not, it's not the kind of, I'm not describing some kind of like shallow kind of like porn type situation yeah i'm talking about something like if you if you if you take all, all the wild stuff and if you somehow merge that with the way you felt when you were a kid and you saw like you know in the 80s and yeah. you saw, you know i don't know you saw like jennifer Connolly for the first time it was like you know intense love too you know like like you're completely yeah. like you know you're in fat infatuation yeah listen listen like just to use the modern parlance right if you got a side chick that you really enjoy banging mm -hmm. that's not infatuation no that's not what i'm describing here no okay she could be as dirty or as wild as that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about somehow that wildness and yet somehow it doesn't spoil that yeah. kind of ethereal of course, infatuation and love yeah. of, you know, something like you felt for the first time when you were a kid, when you, when yeah. you, that's, I don't know, there's no real way to describe it, obviously. Okay. That's yeah. what Kabbalah is. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to bring you. That's supposed to, okay. Now what the, what the Gnostics did, right. The, 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 you know, the, the Christian the, Gnostics and the, the Sufis, all the fruitcakes, all the fruitcakes, what they did was they took all of these ideas and let's okay let, let's kind of let's take like the ideas of kabbalah and this is really messed up but let's say that these are the bedroom um what do they call them i forgot what they call them what Greg, you should know this what that, the, that stuff that people use the se oh, sex toys sex toys sorry oh my god okay the the, the stuff the the uh black um fucking can't 
somebody's zapping my head right now. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. It's probably Rupert Murdoch with his yes. with his ray. With his but, uh, no, accessories, and... accessories. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's the accessories of passionate love. Okay, whatever. You know, that kind yeah. of, you know, just to create a cartoonish idea. Yeah. So that stuff belongs in the bedroom uh, between a couple that that is, you know, passionately, there's a passionate infatuation. Okay, which not very many people can can relate to. Okay. And so you take those implements, okay, those accessories involved in that, and then some some retards they break into your into your house and they steal all of these like you know yeah. all the all of the stuff and yeah. they start running around the streets with it like woo and they make a yeah. big mockery out of it they have like a slut walk with it they have a slut Parade. walk with it you know they they make porn with it they yeah. you know they they use it in, in the worst possible ways it's the ultimate violation no yeah. okay yeah. um so that's that's what it really is. If you understand that, right? If you understand, all you got to understand to be safe in Kabbalah is the context. Yeah. It's not that hard. Me and you are not that smart, but we, you know, we, we have a couple of concepts yeah. that we can, 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 we have a foundation in. Yeah. We understand that everything that's being described there is just an expression. Yeah. God shows himself in various expressions. It's the same God. Ain old Milvado. We have that concept. If you have ain old Milvado, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Ain old Milvado. There is nothing but God, but Him alone. Yeah. On the ultimate level of reality, which we can never reach, because otherwise our existence will be nullified. Yeah. Or maybe we will somehow. God can perform all sorts of yeah. contradictions. I don't know. Eventually. But eventually right but but so far and for the foreseeable future uh we just got to know that that's the that's the that's the most fundamental level of reality okay yeah. that there is truly nothing but god there really is truly nothing okay um and you whoever's listening to this and me uh being a, aware of your own existence is a slight it is it's a slight illusion yeah just to kind of, because otherwise you can't have your own consciousness. And God yeah. wants to have a relationship yeah. with a being with its own consciousness. So there, it's, a, it's a necessary illusion. Okay. Yeah. But but not so strong, but not such an illusion that we can't know the actual reality. We got to somehow know that too. So if you know that there is really is nothing but God. Okay. And if you understand that the text of Tanakh is supernatural that you you see you see that it cannot have been written by any finite being mm -hmm. okay and if you and if you understand that the sfirot and the parts of him are just expressions of god that he uses as an instruction manual for us he presents himself to us in a way that we can recognize so that we can follow an example that we're supposed to follow mm -hmm. it's an instruction manual he doesn't look like that god doesn't look like a guy he doesn't yeah. doesn't look like anything you look like a guy <laughs> and a girl he wanted that's but again that's what he wanted yeah so he shows himself in visions not physically god forbid he and only because he said he wouldn't do it listen yes the answer is god yes god can put can present himself physically but he said he's not going to do it okay mm -hmm. that's why Okay, there's lots of statements. I am God. I am no man. Okay, I am not corporeal. It's not even spiritual. Those are both creations. Yeah. Those are both things that he created. The real essence of God cannot be anything that he created. Okay, he can infuse his essence into his creation. But the creation is not his essence. That's more than a subtle point. That's, that's, that's very important. If you understand these things, and these are not difficult, any one of you listening can understand this. 
It's meant to be understood. God created these concepts to be used by people. You didn't have to be a special genius. Otherwise, he would have made everybody special geniuses. Okay? Yeah. That's, the, that's the platonic viewpoint. Only special geniuses get their stuff, right? And the rest of us don't deserve to live. That's, that's, Pla that's the Plato's Republic. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Okay? So if you understand a couple of basic points, you shouldn't be getting into trouble. And you shouldn't be running around with God's lingerie on the streets like, ooh, look what I got, you know, like a, like a fool. I guess these people are afraid that most people have not, inter including people who are quote unquote religious, have not even internalized that. And maybe even they themselves, they don't even trust themselves that they've internalized that. Again, like I said, they're, they're afraid of themselves. They're afraid of what this all means. They're afraid of what this themselves, they're afraid to face actual reality. You know, again, beneath the veneer that we see. It, 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 if you haven't had to, if you're not lucky like you and I, who were taken by the hand as a as a kid through this whole thing, and you all of a sudden have to face that when you grew up, you know, quote unquote religious, you have to face that in your 30s and 40s. Dude, that is, I've spoken to some people who 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 became quote unquote, you know, they grew up from and they became spiritual. You know, I have a friend, he said, I'm like, so how did you get into, you know, uh, he's into the car, whole car block thing. I'm like, well, I, I you know, I uh, grew up from, I grew up in this modern Orthodox town, wherever, what, whatever it is in the Northeast. And then I, and then he's like, and then I started going to Karl Bach school and then I became spiritual, whatever the heck that means, you know? And so that's just kind of also kind of a little bit surface level because that's just more like, you know, the person attached themselves to something uh, with, uh, you know, what I call superficial ruach, you know, people singing, you know, whatever it is. It's, an, it's, emotion, the, it's, it's, it's an emotional connection. It's yeah, I guess it's good. It's, it is good. It's good. You know, it's better than not having that. Um, I don't know. Listen, I don't claim to know his journey. I don't claim to know if he went through anything scary necessarily in that regard. But again, like, uh, you know, it's scary. It could be very, very, very scary for a lot of these people. And they, they would rather not uh, go there themselves. And they would also rather not, uh, I'll say, even have all of Klausar all go there. Because they, they again, they are afraid that it's just going to go into uh, Shabtai Tzvi territory. But it could, because it could easily go there. Look what happened with the vaccine. Not to compare vaccine to Kabbalah, but you know what I mean. Like if you if you if you if you take medicine to you know some place where it's not supposed to go, you know you see the first country, the first people that ran with this to you know off a cliff like lemmings was was Israel. It's actually a very good example. There's no, it's not a it's not a dude. It's not a it's not a surprise, at least not to me. That the first country they did, they started this stuff with, with was Israel. But aside from the fact that they want to get rid of us, they knew that the Jewish people are, you know, it was a Nasev and Nishma Lehavdil situation. They will do because there's an emergency, and they will, they will then they will listen about, you know, side effects and reports and all this kind of stuff, as opposed to the other way around. They know who the Jewish people. They knew who the Jewish people are. We are, like you said, we're true sheep. We are. You know? So, I don't, I kind of don't blame these guys. We're actually lions. We're actually, 